Hey, Philosophy and Pim here. Today I'm going to show you how to use AI to help writing some condition statement in Revit family. Um, I've been using AI tools such as Copilot for quite some time, just on everyday things, a little bit here and there for work. Uh, but also starting to explore the possibility of using uh, AI to help me write, you know, formulas, Revit families formulas. Um, condition statements and such. Um, I've been building families for a long, long time, but formula sometimes really, really give me a headache. I, I know enough to, uh, to do my, my own work, but from time to time, like I said, um, formula is not necessarily my strongest suit. So I'm thinking, you know, hey, well, why don't I just utilize AI to help me do this and probably hey, help me streamline the process and make the process a little bit more efficient. Uh, yeah, so in this example, this is something that I have done at work, but uh, I have this example that I'm about to show you that kind of show you, you the process and how I can utilize this um, co-pilot tool to help me do things that I, you know, I don't have to think about too much and like I said, I've been uh, from time to time struggling to do this in Revit and it always takes me a long time to figure out the condition statement and I think this will kind of help me uh, uh, better in the in the process and hopefully you'll learn something uh, from my video as well. Okay, all right, let's jump right in. Okay, uh, in this example here, um, I basically have three columns. Okay, I have columns with these uh, model text A, B, and C sort of associated. Um, the concept is pretty simple. Uh, each column here has associated with a parameter. Uh, in this case, this one says A, the other one is B, and C, and so forth. So, uh, in the family type here, let's take a look. Under the family type here, they are under graphics. I basically have this checkbox A, B, and C. So if I were to test this here in the family editor, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the preview visibilities on. So now going back to family types. So we are starting to uncheck this box. You'll see that these columns starting to disappear. Um, so I can do this test pretty easily in ref family. So same thing here. If I turn off B and you'll see that A, B, and see they are controlled by this single checkbox, right? Okay, just like that. So this one is pretty straightforward. This yes, no parameter that control the column visibilities. And then I have another parameter here called column number. This is an integer parameter. So let's take a look at this here for a second. Okay. Um, like I said, this is an integer parameter over here. And the way that is doing with integer is that you have to um, basically control the value and they are basically starting from zero and one and two and so forth. Integer always have a whole number unlike the number parameter. So anyway, the point I'm trying to do is I want to be able to use this integer parameter to control the visibilities of my columns. The concept is pretty simple, right? So if I have zero here, I don't want any column to show up. But if I have one, I want the column A, which is my first column to show up. And if I have two, I want A, column e, A and B to show up. And three, I want all A, B and C columns to show up. So that's the idea behind it. And to do that, I basically have to write a formula, condition statement, conditional statement at each parameter uh, col formula field under the A, B, and C here in order to control their visibilities. Okay, so like I said, um, if you are familiar with formulas, if you know how to basically write your own, yeah, by all means, you can totally do that. Like I said, it's been done before. There are forums, there are articles that talk about how to utilize the formula uh, technique uh, in Revit family. Like I said, uh, I've done formulas in various ways. This one in particular is not my strongest, strongest suit. 
So like I said, I am going to turn into Copilot and see how it can help me. Okay. Okay. All right. I just pulled up uh, Copilot here. Okay. So again, if you haven't used it, again, it's just kind of like you're talking to a search engine, so to speak. Okay. So I'm going to start writing my prompt here in Revit family. Write me a conditional statement as follows. The last condition is when column number is zero, none will be visible. Okay, I didn't quite, you know, mind about the grammar that I have here. I think, you know, uh, Copilot kind of understand what I'm trying to say here. So, okay, let's go ahead and hit uh, enter and see what it does. Okay, you can see that it takes second basically for Copilot to write out all these formulas here. Okay, you can see that right here, basically, uh, I'm going to cut to the chase. All I need to do is to rewrite or copy and paste these formulas to my yes, no parameter, right? Okay. Uh, so there are three of them. Okay. Notice that if I just copy paste here, this is not going to work. Well, of course I've tried it. And, and, and again, because this is technically not a formula a conditional statement that Revit understands. So I have to interpret some of these, you know, uh, text here. Uh, but let's just go ahead and start with the simple one, right? So the simple one basically is this one here called column number equal three. I did here, I'm simply just grabbing this text, put a copy, go back to the family editor here. Okay, so family type again, I'm going to copy this text there we go. So column number equals three. I'm going to hit apply first. You can see that immediately the uh, integer value that I have was two because of that condition. So my column C doesn't show that we just disappear right off the bat. Okay. So I'm going to continue to copy the other two conditions, no statements from my family. Okay. So let's go back to the copilot again. And uh, I'm going to just copy this text here. Go back to Revit family, go to the family type. So if I copy paste this text, it's, like I said, it's not going to work. I'm just going to go ahead and do it anyway here. So the only thing that I have to change is the all here. Okay. So what I need to do is I just need to write a formula like so. I'm going to put Okay, I'm going to put or in front of it and I'm going to put open a parenthesis and I would have a comma here and then a close parenthesis here. So the or just again, the way that works is I have to put it in front of it instead of in the middle. Okay, again, so let's test it out. If I hit apply. So let's just go and test it here. If I say hey, I have one, what does that do? You can see that the second column, the column B disappear, right? That seems to work. Okay. All right. So we got one more. So I'm going to go back to grab the last one from here. The concept is the same. Like I said, this exact text is not going to work. I'm just going to copy that anyway. So I don't have to retype the whole thing. All right. Back to the family, family type. I first going to just copy paste it here. And like I said, I'm going to take out the or here and substitute with a comma. Same thing here. Then I would put or in front of it and add a open parenthesis and close the parenthesis. And let's see what it does and hit apply. Okay, that seems to take it. Revit takes my um, 
conditional statement. All right, so moment of truth. So now if I starting to go, let's just start with zero here. If I start with zero, hit apply. Okay, all the column disappear. Let's start with the one then. And two. And three. Wow, voila. There you go. I got it to work, right? Okay, that's pretty amazing. Again, I didn't have to write the whole thing from the start, but just by simply using Copilot. Uh, of course, I have to understand the graphic formula um, logic a little bit better before I can utilize Copilot to help me write, I guess, half of the formulas. Okay, so, but like I said, I'm, I don't do this every day. I don't write formulas every day when it comes to building Rafa family. But this definitely saved me a lot of time and helped me understand the process a little bit better, again, when it comes to conditional statement. Um, this is just one of the things that you can already do uh, with families. You can simply using integer parameter to control the visibility of something else. Uh, just keep that in mind. There is a limitation because of the kind of condition that I am trying to control here. When the column number integer value is anything other than 0, 1, 2, and 3, it's basically going to bounce back, bounce back to 0. So what I mean is if I have a value of 4, you'll see that because, like I said, because of my conditional statement, uh, it's going to treat 4 as like it's not satisfying any conditions. So therefore all the checkboxes here will be turned off. So it's almost like, you know, uh, no column is gonna show up. So keep that in mind, like I said, in this particular example, I only have that integer parameter to only works with four different values, zero, one, two, and three. But still it's doing what I want to do. That's kind of exactly what I need to do in this example of all my family, okay. All right, so let's try it once again. Again, four doesn't work, but any value from zero to one and two and three is going to work. Okay. All right, I think that is it for the video here. And uh, if you like the video, please, please give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't subscribed my channel, I really, really want you to subscribe to the channel and stay tuned of, of more of the videos in the future. I'm going to try to share more tips and tricks uh, focusing on rabbit families in the future. Uh, but I'll, I'll just talk about any rabbit topics in general. If, uh, if there's anything that you would like to see, uh, please leave a comment and uh, hope, you know, stay tuned for future videos. Thank you for your, for your time. Thank you for watching. See you. Bye.